The video you're about to watch was actually streamed to my Twitch account, which I'm not actively streaming right now, but it's all about how to stream your desktop, your face, and all that using FFmpeg. I did leave out a few things, so I've modified the video to fill in the gaps of what's missing. But down below will also be a link to my Twitch channel, but I don't have any direct plans for uploading in the really near future. But that might change, so we'll see. All right, guys. Peace. Welcome, ladies and germs, to the stream. Today we're gonna we're gonna see, make this full screen for a second so you can see my face. Sorry about the three by four crop, but it is a um, sacrifice I'm making for simplicity, and and I'm a very simple man, so I do things the simple way. But this is the beginning of something awesome. This is a quick little video I'm gonna make about. FFmpeg live streaming and how as powerful and as awesome as OBS is, this uh, is the way to go to save resources. So let's uh, let's open up a new tab. Bring it over here. Uh, it's kind of all over the place here. FFmpeg. So let's look at FFmpeg's documentation. Because there's a lot of documentation, good documentation. Documentation that works very, 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 very good. So what we want to look at is how to stream your devices. So video options. Yeah, I haven't done this before. This is all kind of raw here. So advanced video options. Well, those are cool. Not what we're looking for, though. That's all right. That's all right. Let's go. X11 grabbing. Okay, so if you're running Wayland desktop, I don't know how to do this. Uh, I'm running the X desktop, obviously, because I'm recording this, or should I say streaming this with FFmpeg. But in FFmpeg, you can do F-F, which is the format, X11 grab. That is the entire desktop you're looking at. I can choose the video size, which I mainly chose, chosen, chose, chose the 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio of my main monitor. I have two monitors set up, and I only chose to record this one because this is where I stare at this one. This is the bigger of the two. Um, I then choose my frame rate. I'm a cinema nerd, so everything is 24 frames per second. And then interface this is like your display which you're choosing which mine is also 0, 0.0 that's it and then you can go to the output but you don't have to go to the output there's other things you can do but there's also audio and video grabbing so let's scroll back up here let's look at audio grabbing how do we do this here oh video and audio grabbing so this is where things get kind of cool um, it's grabbing the X11 desktop, but it's also grabbing my default Pulse device, which right now is my great little Fi Fine microphone, which I love very, very much. And then it mixes them together into a stream. So this is how I'm capturing the video of my desktop, the audio from the microphone mixing them together. But then, believe it or not, FFmpeg lets you do filtering. Let's see if I can find video filters. Video filters. I mean, audio filters. Audio filters. <laughs> so, I might not have in this. I had to get a lot of my stuff from several different sources to make this work as well. I did. That's fan. That's again. That's video, Arthur. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Audio options. So. Let's see, advanced audio options, audio this, audio that, audio with a wiffle ball bat, hmm, stream IDs and codes, a bunch of stuff that I don't really understand, uh, but I'm learning. The key is I keep learning more and more about this stuff as I go. I was really trying to hide, for, oh, we're back to grabbing, we need filters bro. Filter. Oh, they have a little section down here. Hmm. Ah, FFmpeg 
filters, audio filters. And here it is, the compressor. The reason why this microphone sounds so dynamic and bright with my voice is I'm running a compressor through it. The compressor kind of equalizes things. I, I, I gotta, you know, let's look up a compressor. Audio compressor. So let's see if there's good images here. There are no images for audio compressor. Audio compression. Let's see if we can find images for that. Here we are. Okay. I'm sure there's a good one on here somewhere. A nice, easy to follow audio compression. Uncompressed sources, high lows and highs and all that kind of stuff. And then heavily compressed, which means my more naturally quiet voice and my very loud booming voice is in a similar um, range. So if I step a few inches back from the microphone, or if I'm right up on that microphone, I still sound nice and audible. And you can actually run in real time as I'm recording through this microphone, the compressor filter. There's other filters you can run, but this is the one that I get the most use out of because it's just a... You know, it keeps me from clipping, keeps me from being hard to hear. You mix that there with the whole thing. Oh, let's see what we got here. And then the last part of the equation that makes this process that I'm doing work so good. How long have I been streaming here? Let's see. It does, it does not say I have the, the, the dashboard over here. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show this, but there's a dashboard for my Twitch. Um, Oh, right there. Psh. Six minutes and 32 seconds. Interesting. Interesting. Um, but yeah, six minutes of streaming. Excellent. So let's go back to the documentation main page. Oh, wow. Look at this. this is all this stuff here. Um, boop. So stream handling. I wonder Wonder if this can't, can't covers the whole... Oh, that means independent streams. Ah... We need to show how to output output to different sources. So let's see. Um, protocols? Formats. I'm going to start with protocols. That seems like a good place to start. I think we are on... Yep. RSTMP? I forgot what, what format that is. Real-time real -time streaming. RTS. RT. I know it's here somewhere. Ice cast. Ooh, ice cast for the different ones. RT. Time. Real time stream. Ah, there it is. Ah, real time streaming. This is the protocol that most streaming services use. Uh, OBS has this baked in. Um. And FFmpeg has this baked in. You could technically take FFmpeg, point it at a video file, spit it to your Twitch, and then fake a live stream. You could do that. There's nothing stopping you. Um, not nearly as much fun, though. But yes, uh, so after you've captured your input, you've captured your audio input and compressed the audio so it sounds crisp. You got your video feed full. 1080p capture, PCM audio recording, you mix them together, but instead of writing them to your hard drive, you write them to your RTSP, real-time streaming protocol. And basically it's, uh, I believe it's, for me, it's laxlive.twitchtv.slash app, and then my magical uh, hidden string that identifies my streaming player as me. And it's a uh, very simple, very simple. I I don't know of a way I can show you how I built this without showing you my little magic code. I should have thought about that before I started the stream, but it is what it is. And uh, that's why I'm going to leave this one, guys. Sorry for the small short stream, but that's what you get on Twitch, my friends. That was the live video. Here's a quick breakdown of the tool as I'm using it. So here's, here's the code, it looks like a lot, but over here I've decided to break it down the best I could. So the first part of course is calling the program FFmpeg, and then we use dash F, which is the X11 grab as we covered before. I process in that I want to 
do the video size, which it basically starts from the left-hand corner across. So because I, because I'm running two screens, it knows only to grab from 19, oops, 19 20 uh, pixels across, 1080 pixels top and down. So it doesn't grab the other screen. I forced the frame rate 24 because I am a film nerd. My input display. So the next part is we give it format of ALSA. Now, I know I said pulse in the live stream version, but um, really it, it calls ALSA and ALSA has a compatibility layer with pulse. So it just pulls that through. The input device is my default, which of course is my microphone. I, I picked that in my sound settings. So if I go to whoop, sound, you'll see my input. You can see the little waveform of my voice bouncing up and down because that is my default microphone. And then I run an audio filter. Again, this is the audio compressor threshold settings. I, I actually found someone made the setting and I think it works great. It's exactly what I'm looking for. So I go ahead and use that. And now because the live stream is kind of requires a certain bit rate, which near at my house is not super fast. I go ahead and run the video filter of scaling it down to 1280 by 720 dash C colon V codec for video H264. A G frame, which is important for streaming and buffering is 24. So every 24 frames, every second, I have a new reference frame. The bit rate for the video is two megabit. Hence, uh, that's a really low bit rate. So I can do this on a mobile connection on my terrible Wi-Fi or at my house, but because it's 1280 by 720, it's able to compress that pretty good. My computer's a little bit slow, so I use the ultra fast preset for H.264. The next line we have here, this is the audio. This is codec dash, I'm mean, gonna call it audio. AAC is the preferred codec for Twitch. Um, the pixel format, this was kind of a little thing where the color space has to be just right. And color space is one of those ethereal things that's kind of hard to wrap your brain around, but every codec has multiple color spaces. And the one that Twitch likes the most, and most flat platforms like, is the YUV420. And then of course, the last format is everything, the audio and the video needs to be put in an FLV container. At that point, it's really just the RTMP the Twitch URL, and then your magic, magic little code, which mine has been X'd out, so you can't steal my streams. And I hope that breakdown helps the video be a little more digestible. All right, guys, that's it for now. Peace.